Now we do the very same thing with a digital manifold gauge set. We checked all three of our pressures, rated for max of 300, max of 300, but the low sides of max of 150. So that's what we're going to use to make sure we're staying safe. We're working with high pressure nitrogen, so we also have our safety glasses on. So what we're going to start with is make sure we have everything attached just like we normally would, and all of my manifold valves are closed. I have my regulator backed out, and notice that I didn't back it out before I quit last time. That's why we always want to make sure we back it out before we open that tank. If in whatever scenario this is closed all the way in and you open that tank, you could overpress your hose and cause it to burst. That has happened to me before, so my helper cranked this all the way in because the tank was dry. We got a new tank, hooked it up, opened it, and that high pressure hit the hose and caused the problem. A lot of the regulators now have limits so that you're less likely for that to happen, but still back this off before you open the valve. Now we're going to open the valve. We can confirm that we have pressure in the tank. We're above 500 PSI. We're going to increase the pressure in the hose to say 300 PSI. Now I have 300 PSI coming to my manifold gate set. So I'm going to put that nitrogen into my refrigerant lines. So what I'm going to do first is open up the REF to allow that pressure into the manifold gauge set itself. And then just like we did before, I'm gonna open up the high side, allow that nitrogen gas to flow through the high side, the evaporator cool them back. I'm gonna watch my PSIG here to get it up to 150 PSI gauge. So we're now up to 150 PSI gauge. And we want to make sure that everything's tight, just like we did before. We want to make sure that these caps are on and these caps are tight. I do like to use Nylog in the connections. I have no affiliation with Nylog whatsoever. I just found a product and it saves me a lot of time. Also put Nylog on these connections here. That ensures that you're not having leaks at any one of these connections. It is a sticky product. It does make a little bit of a mess, but knowing that I don't have leaks is very important. So once I get some nitrogen, it has to kind of equalize. So I just kind of top it off a little bit. We'll just add a little bit more just to get it where I want it. I did exceed that 150. We're up to 156, that's okay. I'm gonna let it sit here just for a little bit to equalize. So once I'm holding pressure, I have the pressure here written on both sides of my digital gauge set, and it's to a fraction of a PSI, so I can see any of the pressure change. The other thing is that my temperature clamp's hooked up here. Now I can also record the temperature of my actual suction and liquid line. So here I have my SLT for suction line temperature and my LLT for liquid line temperature. So now I can see how much my pressure is going to change with my temperature. Now, on a lot of these digital manifold gauge sets, they have a pressure test. A newer version of the field piece, the S-Man 480, I don't have. It does a pressure test function for you. You hold for pressure test, and what it'll do is be monitoring the temperature change over a set of time and the pressure change over a set of time. Now, since my manifold gauge set's not going to do it automatically, we can do the long math, which I don't want to do, or we can use a tool. Remember, our phone is a tool. So I'm going to go to my app called the HVAC School app, and I'm going to go to Tools. And then I'm going to go down here to nitrogen pressure. I'm going to click on nitrogen pressure. It's atmospheric pressure, 14.7. That's close enough for us today. I didn't check it today. My before pressure, we're going to put 155.9. So we click 155.9. And temperature before, our starting temperature is going to be 82.5. 82.5. And now ask for our after temperature. So what we're going to do is simply wait and see what happens. As the temperature warms up, we'll see if the pressure increases and then we'll put our next set of numbers in there. I would hate to help. So it's been one hour. Our pressure is now at 157.9 and our temperature is at 89.4. So we're gonna put that into our app. Our temperature after, we are now at 89.4. We're gonna hit the little check button. Nitrogen pressure results. Our results show we should be at 158.07 and we're at 157.9. So we are very, very close. Our calculation shows we should be at 158.07 PSI. And our PSI is 157.9. So that's less than what, two tenths of a PSI off. So we are good. We are so incredibly close. Over an hour's period of time, we have changed temperature and pressure, but with our calculation with our app, it has calculated us for us. In addition to this method, you could also use the ultrasonic leak detector and be listening for the leaks. Add that moisture to it so you have a better chance of hearing the sounds. Also, you can be using the bubbles. 
on top of all these connections that you did to make sure you're not leaking. The longer that you wait, the better. I do see some people, they do like a 15 minute wait. Well, in a 15 minute window, it's too small to really get to see if you're changed. Ideally, it needs to be in an hour's time frame. Now, we don't always have the luxury of waiting for an hour to do this. So there are other advantages of having the ultrasonic leak detector. And there's another method called trace gas method, which we'll cover in another video. But you can see here how we did it with their digital manifold gauge set. And then we can now release the nitrogen back into the air and we can start pulling our vacuum. Or if we have a leak, we can find that leak and start fixing that leak before we start pulling a vacuum. Even though it seems somewhat involved doing a pressure test, it still saves you so much more time than having to try to pull a vacuum and then do this method again. So it's beneficial to find that leak, make sure you don't have any leaks before you ever pull that vacuum. It's easier to fix the leaks before you ever pull that vacuum.